Um, all right. Today, we start with the Detroit Lions. The, Detroit. The god-awful Detroit Lions. They got Jared Garf in the trade for Matt, or sent Matt Stafford to the Rams. Get Jared Garf. What's their number one thing going forward now? They've got the new head coach installed. What is the priority for the offseason? We know they're not going to be contenders, but how do they start building the blocks for Dan Campbell? They have to resist the urge to jump in line. Uh, the, the GM, uh, what's his name? I, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, Brad Holmes. Brad Holmes, yes. Said the other day that, that the, the uh, I lost my train of thought. What Brad Holmes said yeah, about our, the Detroit our, Lions. Our camera disappeared. That's not what good. happened to the camera? There we go. This has been a fun couple of days. Like, just, you know, every time shit happens, it's just, it's, it's fun. We had a forklift drive through the wall. So if, if you're, I feel like I should explain this. If you tried to watch this yesterday, we had a forklift drive through the wall on Saturday. That was fun. And now things are not quite the way that they used to be. So we're having the audible things as we go. Right. And I'm staring at a big hole in the wall, and I guarantee you the person that did it can hear me talking about it right now. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so the Detroit Lions to make the building blocks here for Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes, this new administration, what do they have to do? Or wh what is their first priority? The biggest thing is that they have to avoid the, the pitfalls. To me, you just take the best player available. No matter what it is, name me a position that they're really good at. I, is there one? Um, I don't know. Center, maybe. Uh, Frank Rag uh, Rag Ragnall. Uh, okay. So, so you got a center. Sweet. Right. Other than that, they don't have a receiver. They just signed Tyrell Williams yesterday for six million dollars. Jeez. That should kind of tell you where their heads at. It's one year deal. Whew. But, I mean, this team's not good. That's a lot of money for him. So, to me, you take your draft capital. They have the seventh pick in every round, if I remember correctly. You just take that. Don't, for the love of God, don't draft a quarterback. The one thing you can do wrong here is draft a quarterback. Don't start the, the clock on a quarterback now is your idea. No. I mean, to me, the, all right, so why would you start the clock? At best, you're going to wind up with Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. So why, and you're going to start Jared Garf anyway. Right. Why would you do that? I, I saw Brad Holmes come out and mention this about uh, the, the, the different flavors of quarterbacks. Yeah, you've got to know every quarterback when you're picking in the top ten. And he's not wrong, but that's not a smart But you can't take that. one. Right. You can't under any circumstances take one. You wait until next year. This team is going to be one of the three worst in the NFL. You're going to have a shot at Sam Howell, Keaton Slovis, and any random guy that winds up up there it won't be Tyler Shuck. Right. But that's uh, to me that is the key to the offseason of the Lions. You don't have any money. You're 25th in the NFL in cap space. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're going to be out here getting value guys in in free agency. So this to me and you're going to tell me I'm out of my mind on this. Okay. To me this is an ideal scenario for Kyle Pitts. I understand they have TJ Hawkinson. They're not the same player. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have to say this. I don't evaluate Kyle Pitts as a tight end. I don't see him as a tight end. He's an offensive weapon. He can line up as a, he's built like Calvin Johnson. He's just a receiver. He's just a dude that catches passes. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, he's going to yoke a, a safety or something coming on a blitz. That's what Kyle Pitts is. Mm -hmm. I think this is his floor. I don't think he could possibly get past the lines. I don't actually think he gets this far. He's the number one player on my board. Yes, ahead of Trevor Lawrence. Sheer talent. Right. Big board Trevor Lawrence is one because of positional value. Mm -hmm. But in terms of just sheer talent, Cal Pitts is one. I don't know that... I mean, obviously, you want young weapons on a team like this. Having a tandem of T.J. Hawkinson and Kyle Pitts would be alluring for any quarterback that's coming in, mm -hmm. especially if you're going to be getting Sam Howell in the next draft. You think you're that, you know, we know you're in contention. I was going to say you think you're in contention. We know you're in contention for that number one pick next year. This is, should be a multi-year process. 
Oh, and it will be. That's the reason Dan Campbell got a mm -hmm. ridiculously long deal. Brad Holmes is probably the safest GM in the NFL for the next three years, no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. And I just I see a lot of teams, or a lot of mocks and things like that, that that mock a quarterback to Detroit. It makes no sense. I think Brad Holmes is smarter than that. He knows this team is going to be god awful. Mm -hmm. Get a piece. You basically get a free piece in Akuda because he was so bad last year. Right. And now you've got a young base. And I'm telling you right now, Akuda, I'm buying as low as it gets. And guess who he's going to be learning the position from? Aaron Glenn, who is one of the best corners I've ever seen that no one talks about. Mm -hmm. He was a great Jet. And now he's a great coach. And they brought him in around Dan Campbell. Brilliant decision. I actually think the Lions are not in that terrible of a position. You're going to suck for a year. Mm hmm I mean, this year, if you go 0-16, I will not be surprised. Well, you're probably going to suck for a couple of years. I don't know about that. I really don't. So you get you have two extra picks from the lot, or you have two extra ones from the Rams mm -hmm. starting next year. So you're going to be able to add two first-round level talents every year for the next three years. Mm -hmm. Save this one. Right. So this year, you had the best player available. Next year, you're going to draft a quarterback very, very high with your own pick. And then you add skill players around that. And you've got guys like Akuda, uh, hell, Frank Ragnow. Mm -hmm. They have a few pieces. They just need way more of them. Right. Uh, they're going to be losing a lot of weapons in this offseason. Marvin Jones is gone. Oh, they're yeah. not bringing Everybody's him back. Gone. Kenny Galladay is gone. <coughs> um, Kenny Galladay is not definitively gone. You think they franchise tag him? No. I mean, well, they could. Nothing with Detroit would shock me. You can't, I mean, you look at how bereft of this team is of talent. Mm -hmm. You can't really let somebody like Kenny Galladay walk out the door for nothing. Now, at the same time, if you franchise him, it becomes guaranteed, and that gets ugly. Right. But they I mean, could. You're a team that's already 20 million over. They also said that uh, they're 9 million over. Or excuse me, 9 million they're, over. They're, they're, it also says a lot to me that they came out and said that they were looking at what would be best for them as well as what's best for Kenny Galladay. Mm -hmm. That tells me a lot. The Lions are trying to change, with, with the Brad Holmes hire, they're trying to change a very long history of not necessarily doing what's best for the player. This has not always been a player friendly place to play. And they're trying to change that mindset. It's the reason they traded Stafford to the Lions as opposed to the Panthers. Mm -hmm. is because they think in the long run, showing that they're a franchise that does right by their players will do them more good than what they would have gotten, the, the little extra they would have gotten from the Panthers. Mm -hmm. This becomes DeAndre Swift's team for this year. Uh, this mm, uh, <laughs> hey, what are you saying uh for? Because he's a running back. He's a running back. He's the best weapon they period, have. actually. I was going to say he's a running back not named blank, and then I thought about it and went, nope, don't want to build it. my team around any running back. Any running back. <laughs> but he's the starting piece, mm -hmm. and he'll be the featured, the featured guy in the entire offense this year. Uh, yeah. Wee. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I look for him to – to have a good sophomore campaign, um, and they, you know, need to focus on the the important building blocks, linemen, all over the place. If you're going to do any moves, I think that's the number one starting starting spot for the Detroit Lions. I think they to have make to sure that you you shore up all linemen, defensive line because they were god awful against the run last year. You gotta get you gotta get guys on that offensive line to be able to open holes for your running back, and you gotta be able to protect your quarterback that's gonna be coming in next year. Not so worried about Jared Garf, but him having protection obviously is gonna help anything that he could do for this franchise. I mean, there this was a planned move to be stuck in this scenario for two years. We got two years to turn this thing around. Acquire some pieces. Focus on the building blocks, chew some kneecaps, and see what we have at the end of this rebuilding process. The problem with the Lions is they're always doing this. As so of right you have now, to have, first off, you have to have confidence that they're even going to be able to do something useful with the picks that they get. 
As of right now, I got them taking Jalen Waddle in the first round, and then they take def two defensive linemen and Richie Grant, the safety out of uh, Central Florida. That's what I have right now. I'm not saying that's going to stay that way. I haven't put out a mock in about a month. Right. Uh, I got another one coming next week. I added one this year. Now that we have a lot of content to do, we added a mock draft. And I like doing mock drafts. Sue me. All right, let's talk about the Cleveland 